you have your LSP configured and ready to rock. Telescope is looking good. Harpoon, because you're a real one. You even have undo tree ready. Get integration with fugitive, but every time you open Vim, you just look at that blinking cursor. You don't even know how to use Vim. So in this video, we're gonna go through how to actually use Vim, how to use it effectively, and we're gonna resolve a conflict, we're gonna fix a bug, and so I just wanted you to be excited. I want that appetite wet. So let me show you how to use Vim. And if you don't have your Vim set up, I have a Vim setup RC video right here. So what we're gonna be doing with Vim today is actually solving a bug when I'm running a cargo and trying to build the Chad stack. If you're not familiar with the Chad stack, I mean, you clearly haven't been on Twitch recently. What? But it's the most aggressive, the most sweatiest, the greatest web development stack ever created, of course, which is COBOL, Haskell, AlpineJS, and Docker. Chad material. So effectively, how Chad stack works is that it takes the pages directory, and it will actually walk through the directory and create your application. So show some has a variable path right here called value one, it has a variable path called value two, and then it has this index.html, which gives you a nice and beautiful message that all chads approve of. Since we're using Haskell, it does a CGI bin gateway into our COBOL program. So what it needs to do is generate out a controller called show some, and then it also needs to generate out the view template called show some. And that is what our chatter program is, which of course you have to use Rust as well. The tool, the build tool can be built in Rust for the chat stack. And so I wanna be able to execute chatter and boom, build chat stack. So what is the error? Well, if I go like this, cargo run, we get the weirdest error right here. It says no such file or directory. If I just simply add in a Rust backtrace, it will tell me where did this error happen? So if I jump all the way up here, you'll see right here, main 45. So let's jump over and let's open up Vim to the current directory. When I get here, I'll see this tree view. So I guess I could go to source, press enter, go to main, press enter, type in colon 45 and jump down to that. But that's kind of inconvenient, right? You don't want to have to use a file tree. File trees are just not all that useful unless if you're creating or deleting things. So let's quit Vim and let's do it again. I'll reopen it up at this directory, but I'm going to press control P, which will open up telescope. If I was a bit more zoomed out, it would actually give me that nice little view to what's actually inside the folder. So I could start typing out main and you can see main's contents on the side. But since we're on YouTube, baby, you know, we got to be all nice and kind of small here. So I'm going to type in main fuzzy find my way there press enter and look at that we're in main colon 45 to jump to the line and look at that we're failing writing out the controller path so why is that let's find out so i'm gonna press fc jump over to the controller gd jump to definition if you've watched my setting up NeoVim from scratch, you would know GD. I use it inside of LSP zero to jump to definition. You can even see right there, Vim LSP buff definition. Boom, takes whatever's under your cursor and jumps to its definition. All right, so I'm looking right here and I can see right away that you have this controllers directory and then I write out my controller.cobol. So I should be trying to write shownamecobol. So what's the problem? If I jump back here and I go LS, what do you see? Do you see the folder controllers? No. Do you see the folder views? No, you don't. So how much do you want to bet we need to create those directories? So let's jump back here. Now I can fuzzy find my way back and by pressing main, but that's kind of like meh. I can also press control caret, which will jump back to my previous file. It's called alternate file. It's fantastic. I use that jumping all the time, but my personal favorite form of navigation is actually harpoon. So I'm gonna press leader A, which will append this current file, which is main file, to my harpoon list. I'll use alternate file to jump back to my pages one, press leader A, add it to my harpoon list. If I press control E, it'll show my harpoon menu. You're gonna have to set up your own remaps to be whatever you like. These are the remaps I like. You can see I have main on my first, pages on my second, and now I can just press a single key and go back and forth between them. I have it on control H and T, since I use Dvorak, by the way. I use Dvorak and program in Rust and use NeoVim. <laughs> Chad. Okay, this is a Chad stack. Anyways, so I just press Control H or T and I'll jump to it. So since I want to be in main, I'll press Control H. Now I'm in main. So let's validate that our fix actually works. I'm going to go like this. Uh, standard FS create directory and let's create a controller. Controllers. So now this should cause us to fail, but this time on line 48. Look at that. It should cause it on line 48. So we should be able to see that. So let's go back here. Let's rerun it with the backtrace. 
There we go. It did fail. And where did it fail at? Line 48. So it was the problem. We just didn't have the directory there. I'll jump back into Vim. I will then jump up seven, highlight, do that, delete out the contents with the the classic CI double quote, which will jump to the first string and then delete out its contents. Look at that. Copilot's even giving me the answer. Of course I want views. Press tab to complete it. Save it. Jump back here. Rerun it. We're good. We're looking good. Do a little LS on the controllers. You can see other app and show some being generated. If I cat out controller or views uh, other app, we should see suck it Melky. The only appropriate thing to say to him because I, you know, I wanted to make a small div, and we all know Melky has a small div, right? <laughs> right. Bruh. Let's actually do it a little bit better. So I'm going to use control P. I'm going to go to pages. I'm going to go to other app index.html jump in here and let's turn turn that div to a P save it jump back here re execute that cargo run. Let's cat back out the other app. Look at that Melky now has a small P chat stack. All right, so let's harpoon our way back to the main file. So I'm going to just execute harpoon list item one, jump back to the main. Let's make this a little bit better because if you think about it, if I go six down, jump to definition, this thing has the word controllers down here. If I use alternate file, this thing has controllers over here. Let's use harpoon, jump back to pages. You can see we don't want this. This kind of sucks, right? So let's go up to the top and let's go public const controllers, which is a ampersand string. We'll do that. Let's hide. Highlight, yank, paste, F, capital C, D, C, I, W for cut out word, views, C, I, double quotes for cut out inside of quotes, type in the word views, hit save, harpoon our way all the way back to our main file, C, A, double quotes, now we're looking good, go controllers, if I press yes on the autocomplete right here, notice that it says use pages, it will also auto import it for me, notice that my screen went down one, if I press asterisk, it will search for this instance within this file, and then I can use next to jump around, you can see up top, it included it, let's jump back down here, C, A, double quotes, views, now here's a problem, I didn't use the autocomplete to complete it. Therefore, it's not in our file right now, right? We're not actually importing it. So if I write, look at that. We have ourselves a problem. If I jump back to my LSP folder over here, you will see right here that I have this whole Vim code action going on here. This will perform a code action with your LSP, which if your LSP is properly set up, you will be able to do some auto fixing. So I do Vim code action. It's going to say, hey, do you want to import or do you want to qualify? If we choose qualify, look at that. That's pretty cool, right? Let's undo that and let's execute again. Let's press import. Uh, if you jump back up here, you'll see that controller views. Awesome. I'm going to press control O, jump back from whence I came. I'm going to hit save once. LSP analyzer runs one more time. Boom, everything's looking good. Let's actually jump back to our pages file and then let's press asterisk to search for controllers. We're back here. C I W. Let's do a little squirrely brace here. Jump over F comma to jump over here. Press A space controllers. I'm going to press control N to go down to the next one. Control Y to accept it. Yes, comma leave it, save it, because I'm a chronic saver, maybe save four times just to make sure, five down, capital F, semicolon back here, A space, views, comma, save, and it's going to say, hey, you can't do that, so we're going to go capital F, little V, C, I, W, put in one of those, hit the save, jump back to the main, and everything's looking good, go over here, re-hit the old cargo build, and beautiful, we got it. But you know what we need to do? We need to create a merge conflict because we want to be able to actually show off some of the cool parts of Vim, especially when it comes to merge conflicts and working with Git. So right now, you're probably already pretty impressed. So this whole like Git conflict resolution just feels like so much. So if you are, hey, press like, press the subscribe button, send me the signals that you enjoy it. And if you do send enough, I will make a video about how I'm actually going so fast between everything, being able to jump between Vim, the command line and everything and give you a further like meta workflow on how to use your computer effectively because we could make it even better we could go over to our browser back to here back to our browser back here back bop, 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 go as fast as you would like so press those buttons let me know in the comments before we create that git problem i did want to show you one kind of cool thing i want you to notice up here that it says line 22 18 17 like what the heck's going on up here well this little top item is called context tree sitter what it does is it grabs whatever you're in and puts it on the very very top so if i were to create a bunch of space here notice that the four loop stays there which means that since i use relative line numbers i could go like this 42 up whoopsies 
42 up, it will jump up to that line. It's told me where I'm at. If I use control O, I'll jump back all around. Oopsies. I personally find context to be really awesome. Definitely use it. It's called the Neo Vim. All right, so now on to Git. I use leader GS, leader Git status. It shows me the status of my Git. I can actually work with it. I can press equal sign to look at all the differences. Remember when we had we made Melky have a small P? I can press equal to undo it. I can also visually select a chunk and press S to only commit that chunk. So if I jump down to the bottom, you'll see that I have staged just that one chunk but not everything so you can chunk by chunk grab it or you can just press s on the entire file it's beautiful so let's just commit all of our changes right here and instead of actually committing it i'm going to press czz which czz actually is going to stash the changes so there we go we have the changes stashed we're back to our old error we're not having any change of code all right so let's create the conflict so effectively what i want to do is take our old code we had because we stashed all of our changes and I want to put duplicate code that's slightly different in the same spot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use undo tree. So space U will actually give me everything that has happened within this file. So if you look at this, my cursor is now on this file. Here's all the changes we've done. I'm going to use control W H to jump over. I'm going to go back to about seven minutes ago. Now I'm going to press control W L to go to this one. I'm going to press control D to jump down by half page. There's the thing I want. Y A P yap the paragraph, yank it. Control W H back over G G to go to the top. Press enter on this one. Now we're in the latest change. I'm going to control W back to over here. The control W O to close all the windows. And now I can just press shift P to give it that nice paste upper. Go like that. I like kind of, you know, nice little white space. Hit save. But I want to make it different, right? I don't want to have the same change. So check this out. All right. So let's make a change so that they're different and it'll cause a conflict. So I'm going to go CIW quotes controllers. Thank you, uh, Copilot, for introducing that syntax error. CIW quotes do the same thing. Awesome. Thank you for not the syntax error that time. Cool job, Copilot. All right, so this is obviously different than it was last time. Now, we should have a conflict. I'm going to save it, re-get status, see my new change. I'm going to press S to save this, CC to commit this. And I'm going to go like this, fix uh, the controller and view folders. Save that file. It's now committed that. Now I want to pop off my stash that's broken. So I go CZ capital A. By doing capital A, it forces the pop, and we've created the whole conflict. Look at the conflict right here. We have a better fix in place, but everything's broken. So let's jump up in here. Again, Control W, O. You can do Control W, Control O, Control W, capital O, Control W, Control Shift O. It just, they all work. If I press U on on stage, you can see the difference. But fixing these things like in place is just like that's not fun i don't want to have to jump into the file and fix it by hand that sucks so instead what i'm going to do is i'm going to press dv while on main and then i can see the change actively on both sides so let's do that i'm going to close this file zoom out a bit control w equal to equal all those things and you can see okay so i have this side which has the controllers and views hard-coded, or this side that has the controller and views as a variable from the pages one. Well, I want this one, so I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go G, H, and it's gonna select this side on that conflict. I'm gonna hit save once, and we should start seeing these errors going away. There we go, the errors went away. But what was that G, H? I have this remap right here that executes a diff git, and I either get left or right. And remember, since I use Dvorak, by the way, U is first finger power finger on my right hand, so I'm going to get the right hand side with my power right hand finger, or I'm going to get my left hand power finger, which is going to be the U. So U is left hand. I think I said that backwards. H is right hand. There we go. Just bap, 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 bap. So G, U. GH. Wait, said that backwards. GH, GU. Yeah, got him. It makes more sense when I'm typing it because, of course, it's just located. So it's like GU. I'm just going to that side. It just makes it easy because I'm going right here. This finger, that side. This finger, that side. So there we go. The conflict has been resolved. So I don't need these two outside windows. So what I'm going to press is Control W, O, close everything, zoom back in for y'all, press save. That looks beautiful, right? When I go to GS, you'll notice that I still have this one unstaged. I still have this one unstaged. So I'm going to press S, commit everything. Now our main changes actually has in the controllers and the two things. You can see we removed the hard-coded ones. We have now our new variable ones. I'm going to press CC and go like this, fix the proper fix. You know, nothing like a good 
thing up. All right, so let's actually commit this. Let's push this up to master. So leader P, this is another remap I have that's just going to execute git push. But look at that. I don't have my upstream set. So I'm going to actually use tmux. I'm going to use control A, open bracket, yank that line, hit the colon, paste it in, jump all the way back, erase everything, capital G, git, because fugitive comes with a git wrapper included. Press enter. It's going to push it upstream, and we're going to track the branch. And so that's using Vim. Notice that you can use Vim, and you can have the same experience you get with any high-powered, really sluggishly slow use your mouse editor, or you can just get that keyboard centric development flow which clearly is just the most efficient way to edit text so again please hey like subscribe give me a comment i really appreciate that if you appreciate this and you do want that total tmux i3 vim combo workflow i will know to make it based off how you respond the name i'm pointing way too long at you the name is the primogen uh -uh.